and uh, it, it's a matter of, okay, one of the things I would say to do, and, and that is, in a, in a business, we have um, always planned, you know, we have our strategic plans, we have our three-year goals, our five-year goals, all of that. Very seldom do families do planning, and one of the things that we learned in YPO, my wife and I, is that you can do that. You can sit down and you can go, okay, in five years, what do we want the family unit to look like? Now, the business thing is part of that, but um, I can remember, you know, actually charting out the number of hours I wanted to work each week and how I was going to bring that down. Um, you know, think about the, the three questions. You know, what, how do I envision my family in five years? Um, and, and then go personally and, and go, okay, if I'm struck with an incurable disease and I'm going to die in six months, what do I want to accomplish? And then finally be uh, the Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn who comes back to his own um, funeral and gets to hear the eulogies. What eulogy would you like to hear? And if that's basically your short, medium, and long-term goals, and again, those should be consistent. But Take uh, your family, sit down. I mean, we even get our nine-year-old to tell us what he thinks we should be doing in five years. Uh, not necessarily that we'll be doing exactly what he <laughs> thinks, but uh, he gets, a, he gets um, a voice in it. And I think it's important to, to do that. Rita and I have date night weekly so that we don't get mired into just being, you know, mom and dad. Uh, so it's, I, I'd say just, you know, plan the family instead of just, you know, concentrating on the business. Thank you, Doug. It looks like we have another young lady okay. that would like to ask you a question. Yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering if you knew how to go about getting a trademark. Um, yeah, well, you can, I would imagine that the government puts out a website now that makes it easy, and there's probably a lot of forms you can get online from some of the uh, attorneys that you know have online you just just basically a, a form um, first thing to do is research make sure that you aren't infringing on anybody else's trademark or that it could be similar enough to be thought of that way and then I'm sure you can find inexpensive ways to go about you just fill out the application send them in I, I know we use lawyers to do it but if you're starting out that isn't probably the uh, uh, most cost-effective the other thing you can do is copyright stuff. Copyright is real inexpensive and uh, inexpensive not only to do, because you just have to do the little C in the circle. You don't have to file a bunch of forms and stuff, but it's also easy to police. So that's another way to start it and then, you know, develop the trademark thing. And um, I don't really know what the difference is between trademark and copyright. <laughs> In the technical differences I'd have a tough one with, but, but basically a trademark is, a brand, is, is what you want to use as a brand. And uh, the, it's like you don't use it um, like Ugg boots. We will always say Ugg boots because Ugg is the trademark. You, you want to be careful not to get things generic. Copyright would be something like music people, writers do it all the time, artists, because you just put a, a C circle in the year and it is protected. We copyright every shoe design we do now, so that if anybody copies it, it's real easy for us to just go to the uh, import department or uh, the part of the government, and they'll just uh, stop people from bringing in things. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question yeah. up here from this young man, Doug. Yeah. Um, as a surfer, you kind of said that you need to find something um, in order to stabilize your lifestyle that you wanted to keep. And uh, I was just wondering, I mean, did you, you know, you found, obviously you found this, this, you know, huge, huge business you're doing, but did you actually enjoy, or are you enjoying, you know, doing this, you know, like this, you know, this huge, because I mean, it, it kind of like takes a lot away from, you know, that surfer lifestyle. Um, just curious if you, if you're enjoying it right now. Well, right now I'm retired, so <laughs> surfing is my lifestyle. Um, as we were going in business, I've got to say there were certain things that I didn't like doing as much as other things that I did. Um, 
but then also you can find people with skill sets that like that as well as you grow. Um, and, and I still say if, if it's what you like, you'll be much happier doing it and therefore your chances of success are much greater. And um, whatever your passion might be, just find something around it that um, you feel your skill set will contribute to. I hope that answered it yeah, for you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question. Please, if you would. Uh, I was, <clears throat> you're talking about growth, and um, when you, because it started out California and then went to Hawaii and then started to branch out from there. How did it go from, I mean, and then key accounts, st sticking with them, and how did, what was, what was the path that you took that allowed you to grow and become so large. And you mentioned the S-curves, and I don't know if that had anything to do with that directly. Or Well, S-curves, and if you're not familiar with S-curves, basically it's formed like an S. Um, the first third, if you look at time going across and market share, market penetration going up the side, what happens is the first third of the time is spent capturing 10% of the market share. The second third will take you from 10 to 90%, and the third third to market saturation of 99.8. So the idea being is finding something, a product or, or something that is just breaking out of that 10%, so you get the big chunk of the growth. Um, trying to think of something that's similar to that now. Smart houses are, are right in that 10% range now. Uh, I think GPS and cars have just gone a little past that, if I'm not mistaken, but it's, it's real close in that range. Um, so that's the S curve, and I I well, missed the first. So like, like I have a small company too, and I'm okay. starting to get new accounts. Yep. I mean, it's gone from five to 10 to you know 15. And Great. East, West Coast, key shops, I mean cities, yep. and now branching out to the East Coast. Okay. And so then what's, what's next, <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically. You well, know, the, the, the world's your pie, you know. Is um, that how you get to the, become the $20 million company, you go to Japan and Europe and? Well, I, I, before you do that, get your local area set. I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in picking your top 10 or 20 perspective. Who would you want to be in that can really shout your message out there that you can really partner with as a retailer? Concentrate on the top, you know, prioritize them and do what it takes to be completely just that it's executed and you are performing real well with those partners. And then the rest of them are going to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just have, you have to figure out who are your alpha retailers. And let them build the brand. They'll, they'll build it for you or with you. Uh -huh. you, you know, you're, it's, it's a partnership. Give you a representation. You know, because you're the one who has to control the image. Cool. And they're the one who gives you the access to the consumer. And if you don't like that, use your own website. Set your own retail stores up. That's one thing we've been doing with UGG now that's been very successful for us. Online sales. Online sales as well as uh, our own retail outlets. Just because it's easy to control your image that way. That, and that's key for you as an entrepreneur is you know what your brand needs to look like. Don't let the retailer dictate mm -hmm. what it looks like out on the floor. And how do you generate your online? Um, it, you know, Correct. search engines are big things, sure. but they grow organically. Uh, um, and, and I think especially if you've got a product that's geared towards your age group, you guys grew up having computers. You have, might have somebody like me that's still, you know, I can navigate around and I can kind of look at Facebook now and then just check what my daughter or son's doing. But, <laughs> um, you know, those, I, I'm not what I'd call comfortable, whereas my kids, you know, their appendage is their mobile phone and they can text faster than, you know, I can talk, so. Thanks. Thank you for your question. Did you have a question, sir? Please, thank you. First of all, I want to say I really appreciate you coming out and sharing your insights. I recently started my own company, so it's people like you who inspire people like me. Correct. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, my question is, 
how do you set up your brands or how does Decker set up its brands? 